Hey everyone, Rogold here, and today saw the release of TU 16.3 for The Division 2, which if you watched some of my videos from last week, you knew that this was coming on this day, and so the patch is live and we have the patch notes, and that's what I want to go over in this video, because this update has turned out to be uh, very surprising in more than one way. By that I mean there's a lot of good stuff in here that I think is really positive for the game, I'm super glad it made it, made it into this update. There are some surprising things that I didn't really see coming, and I know for a fact that some people will be very pleased about, and then on the other hand, there is at least one quite negative aspect to this uh, update that I think a lot of people are going to be very upset about, and rightly so, and I really want to talk about that and dive into it. So without further ado, let's get into these patch notes. All right, so going up here, I'm just going to kind of, it's not like a terribly long update because, you know, it's just a, it's a, it's a point three, right? It's not one of the, the big ones. So let's just go through the patch notes one by one, and I'll kind of break down and get my thoughts on it. Obviously, you can see here they were going to deploy uh, this morning, and that is now up. And so here are the patch notes for 16.3. The first one for PvP is that they fixed the issue that allowed players to turn invisible by interacting with uh, the different doors and whatnot. Super glad that that's fixed. That was a big one. And again, I'm really glad that that has been sorted out. And I'll just skip down quick. They've also fixed the issue with Foundry Bulwark granting... Uh, invincibility is basically what was going on there. So both the invisibility and the invincibility glitches in the DZ and PvP have been fixed. Very, very glad about that. There is still no fix for the Shrapnel Trap, which is a big bummer. Um, so hopefully that can get sorted out, I don't know, in the next like 16.4 or whatever it's going to be. But for now, the DZ should be a much more uh, <laughs> balanced spot aside from the other issues that it you know always has. But for the most part, that's a really good change. All right, moving back up here, there were two for the Manhunt that players will no longer receive decryption keys and the Season 9 objectives are no longer active. I think there were some issues where people were still getting told to uh, talk to Kelso about Season 9 stuff when we're now obviously on to Season 10. So glad that's been sorted out. The other fixes that they had for the gear and weapons besides Foundry was that they fixed some textures for the Carbine 7. Not entirely sure what was wrong there, but always glad to hear that. And then they fixed uh, Brazos's item quality in the Appearance Collection tab. I assume that means maybe more transmog accessibility now, uh, because I think some of them are still blocked or limited. I haven't been able to log on yet this morning, so I'm not 100% sure what that means, but glad that they're sorting some of that stuff out. With matchmaking, they fixed an issue where people were unable to matchmake for raids or expeditions while in a group. Blah, blah, blah. I can read that there but glad that that's sorted for vanity they fixed multiple minor clipping issues i believe there were some issues with some of the uh shd paragon items from the most recent apparel event but you know hopefully that has all been sorted out for the strongholds they fixed a a range of issues there that you can read through I'll also leave a link to these patch notes in the description so you can really go down and read through them you can see there were a lot of things with the new legendary specifically uh, manning zoo had a number of fixes there that they took care of so that's good uh, a few miscellaneous ones here that's the compare tab no longer overlaps with the reconfigured tab in the crafting station and apparently there was an issue where you get unlimited shd points to spend on resources when running the game in certain languages i hadn't heard of that one myself i think if people knew that that was a thing that would have been used a lot more uh, but it is now fixed so don't go looking for it I suppose this is the one that I was talking about that's quite surprising and I know for a fact that some people are going to be very pleased by this for a certain reason so they've added a new outfit into the store as you can see right here the pink tracksuit is now available for 640 premium credits the reason why I think people are going to be excited by this is I've had a lot of people say to me that they wanted the return to the way that apparel was done in the division one where you had a base uh, item that had a multitude of colorways that you could equip for that same item. And with this tracksuit, we obviously just got the yellow tracksuit as part of the one-time offer a few weeks back, and they're now adding a pink one. So I don't know if they plan to go in and add even more colors to that in the store or what they might do, but if this signals any sort of way that they might continue this trend down the line in the Division 2 where they're introducing items with multiple colorways. Again, I've had a lot of people tell me over the years that they want to return to that style of apparel, and so hopefully for those people, this is a good sign that they might be heading in that direction. Either way, hope that some people are... Um you know, pleased by this, and they can go and pick this up in the store right now. I, I think I'll be fine with my yellow one. Uh, but again, it's just nice to have options, and so hopefully that signals uh, a change in direction there a little bit for the future. All right, and then the other super positive one about this update is that they have finally added the long-promised Stinger Hunter outfit to the store. As you can see right here, this is one that I've been getting a ton of questions about because they said back during the Season 10 reveal that it was coming mid-season, and it is finally here. So you can get the entire bundle in the store for 2,075 premium credits, and then if you just want to buy individual pieces, you can see the breakdown right there, and you can buy them all with textiles, which I, I think they said that uh, during the S10 reveal stream, but that's always nice because it means people can get it without having to spend real money, and so yeah, that is now in the store if you want to go and pick it up if you didn't already have it, and I think a lot of people are going to be very pleased by that. And then we come to the very last change here, which is going to be the one that is 
uh, uh, going to upset a lot of people. And I, like I said, rightly so. Uh, but let's go over it and let's talk about it. There, <laughs> in this category of won't fix, we have Picaro's holster can't be rolled to a red. I'm just going to read word for word what they said. Our intention for the item was to allow for the core attribute to be re-rolled to a red one instead of the blue that it comes with. As the item technically already had a red core but was placed under attributes, the game will not allow the re-roll to red. Changing this behavior would mean having to recode the entire behavior of all items in the game and risk introducing issues in that process. As it would require a complete re build of attributes on all items in the game, we had to take the decision to leave Picaro Solster as it is for now. So the small silver lining here is that I thought from be the beginning that equipping two reds on a single piece would be kind of problematic for balancing specifically in PvP, so not going to say I'm terribly upset by this, but rightly so, everyone is going to be very uh, frustrated by this, and like I said, that's totally justified. They have said for, what, two months now? that they are working on allowing you to roll red on Picaro's holster. It was supposed to be a fix in TU 16.1, and then it just, they said, like, it didn't work. And then they, you know, kept working on it. I think the biggest blunder here is the communication. I understand, like, at the end of the day, what are you going to do about the fact that it's, they would require a complete recode? There's nothing, you know, they can do to make that uh, process any simpler on them. I think the overall issue here is that if it looked like it was trending towards that outcome, right, after 16.1, instead of them saying, oh, we'll try and get it in the next update, if they knew there were issues cropping up, and again, I'm not in their shoes, I don't know what the process was like, but I think the smartest decision would have been to say, be very transparent, put out a post about it on Twitter and say, hey guys, we are looking into this, obviously we intended for you to be able to roll two reds, it's looking like that might not be possible like we originally thought it was, but we're going to continue investigating it and we will update you when we have that information. And instead, we've now waited since 16.1 until 16.3, and they just now throw it in at the bottom of the patch notes that, oh, it's not possible. It's like, well, I, I can understand that, right? And that's fine. But you've led people on now for two months to say that it is possible and that you are working on it. And I just think that's, you know, that's a bit of a blunder on Mass's part. Like I said, I think it deserved them it having its own post on Twitter explaining the issue, telling people why the original plan isn't going to work out. I just think that would have made this whole process much more smooth because now you're going to have a lot of people that are very frustrated that they were led on for two months, coming up with build ideas, coming up with this and that, maybe even farming for different Picaros pieces to, you know, alter once it could roll double reds. And that's now just not going to be possible. And I think, again, if they had just said from the beginning, it's looking like this might not actually be possible like we thought it was, but we're still going to look into it. Then at least people have the expectation in their mind that, oh, maybe I should just wait until there's further information to really invest my time into this. Whereas now they've just kind of pulled the rug out from under us and been like, oh, yeah, it's not possible, even though we've, we haven't said anything that to suggest that leading up to now. And so, yeah, is what it is. But I think that's a big blunder in terms of communication. Um, certainly not the first one we had in year four. So I really hope that that can kind of improve uh, moving forward as we get closer to year five and all of that. And yeah, interested to see what people are going to have to say about that one. That is going to do it for my coverage and recap of the TU 16.3 patch notes, though. Everybody, I very much hope you enjoyed and hope that you uh, had some fixes and changes in here that you were looking forward to. I know for myself, I'm super glad that the PvP stuff has been sorted out. I know a lot of people are going to be happy about the Stinger Hunter outfit now being in the store and i'm curious to know if people are going to be uh, excited or not by the fact that they're starting to introduce multiple colorways of the same apparel in the game like i said a lot of people have been telling me about that for a long time so i hope you're happy thank you all so much for watching leave a like if you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe with notifications on to be updated every time i upload as i said let me know your thoughts on all of the different topics within these patch notes what are you thinking about some of the changes that got added to the game what are you still hoping to see in 16.4 or a future update i know for me really still hoping the shrapnel trap can get its proper nerf or nullification in the future. I think that's another big one for PvP before the big changes that we're supposed to get with Season 11. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it for me today, everybody. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and until the next one, guys, Rogue Gold, out.